Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome to Freebeat, where I post new music-related videos every single day. So if that sounds good to you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Let's get started. I am so excited for today's video. We've got a special guest. Well, he's going to be a permanent addition, actually. We've got the Novation Launch Control XL. Now, this is typically a controller for Ableton, which I plan on using it for Ableton. I know nothing about Ableton, um, but I do a lot better with hardware, so I've got one of these. And then I also have uh, one more controller coming to help me kind of learn it. The thing that really made me want to buy this, though, is I watched uh, Cuckoo do a video about pairing it with the OPZ. And uh, you guys know I love the OPZ, and I thought, man, if there was a way to control all the parameters like in real time without having to dive through all the different pages and menus and stuff, that would be incredible. Lo and behold, here it is. So I've actually made a couple templates. You can do up to eight user templates on here, and I've, uh, I've made them in the software that comes with the uh, launch control, and I've got them all set up for things that I want to, uh, to work in the OPZ. Some things I, I didn't get right. I've played with it just a little bit, uh, just to make sure I had the basic functions down. But uh, yeah, we are gonna control the OPZ and try to jam a track out on this guy. So first you'll need one of these, which is a USB type B to type C connector. So the type B goes right there. And then of course the type C goes right there. We're gonna power on the OPZ. You can see the uh, launch control also powers on. So let me show you how I've got things set up here. So first of all, let's start with probably my favorite part, the faders. So each one of these eight faders here corresponds to the first eight tracks on the OPZ. So this is the kick, snare, hi-hat, sample track, bass, lead, arpeggio, and chord track. So you can real-time mix all of your stuff, which is just incredible. No matter which template I'm on, those sliders are always on those parameters. Then we can hold user down, and now these bottom eight banks become available to us. The first one is going to be our kick track. So I have the four pages of four parameters mapped here. So we've got our first page, our second page, our third page, and our fourth page. Then down here, I have a tape control, tape track control. These first two, actually. Um, I forgot what's right here. And I think this is the master track, so uh, yeah. And then basically, if we move to track two, that's going to be snare drum with all those same parameters. Track three it is going to be hi-hat with all those same parameters for that respective track. Track four is a little different. Um, track five, we move to the bass. Six is the uh, lead. Seven is the arpeggio. And eight is the chord. Um, track four, or bank four here on the launch control, is more of a performance track. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll get to that when we, when we get there, but things are a little different. So on the OPZ, let's go to the kick track. Let's bring the volume up. It's just so nice to be able to do that in real time. So uh, let's make a little pattern here. Let's just give ourselves four on the floor, nice and simple. Let's get the metronome out of there. Now let's go to the snare track. Oh, got to bring it up. That's right. Let's put that on two and four. Whoop. <laughs> I messed that up already. There we go. Basic pattern. Hi-hat. We'll just go like... Oh, got to bring it up. Still getting used to that. Quantize it. Awesome. Uh, just like that, we can mix it. Let's get a bass line. Got to bring the bass up. Oop, bass, there we go. That's good. We'll go two measures. One, two, three, go. There we go. <laughs> go 
go to the chord track. Something like that. I don't know, really nice and basic. Okay. So let's show you how some of these parameters work here. Let's take out the bass. Let's go to the kick drum. So this first one is pitch. You can hear the pitch of the bass drum changing. This one is gonna be reverse. I'll leave that straightforward. This is our resonance. This is our filter. These are gonna be our envelope. These are our LFO. These are effects of one and two. That's delay. Here's our reverb. And then this is pan, and this is volume, but we don't really use volume since we have the master volume controller right there. Oop, I'm gonna take, uh, take the reverb off and the delay off. And the same thing's true for the snare drum. So pitch, filter, and uh, yeah. Let's see here. Let's go to the bass track. So parameter A, parameter B, resonance, filter, Here's our envelope, so attack, decay, sustain, release. Pretty cool. Bring up the volume, our LFO settings, and then our effects. So now let's talk about these ones down here. So like I said, this is the entire master track. So resonance for the whole master track, filter for the whole track. Cut off, I should say. Then down here we have overdrive and chorus. That's for the whole track. Forgot what these two are. There's something, can't remember. So, now let's move on down to these pads here. So uh, these are a couple that aren't working as I wanted. I need to set the MIDI note numbers. I wanted to have a bass drum, a snare drum, hi-hat, and an open hi-hat so I could play some live drums. The sounds aren't the ones that I want. Didn't work out as intended, that's okay. Right here, I have this set to the first F of the tape track so I can hold it. And then I can adjust it, the speed of it with those. And I've kind of got it messed up. I only have that available on uh, track one. I need to, to move it down to here, to the performance track. But uh, yeah, let's talk about our performance track. So on the performance track, each one of these first four knobs controls the pitch of each uh, sample track. So bass drum pitch, snare drum pitch, hi-hat pitch, sample pitch. Right here, are the filters for each percussion track. Near the snare drum. Right down here, these are gonna be uh, four synth knobs, and these actually correspond to what I think the most useful parameter is for each of those. So for bass, it's gonna be parameter A. For lead, it's gonna be attack. 
for the chord track, for, or sorry, for arpeggio, it's going to be the uh, decay. And the chord track is also parameter A. And as you can hear, these are the filter cutoffs for all four synth tracks. If we want to adjust the resonance, we can just go to the chord track and turn it up. These knobs here, these first four, are the effects and A for each of the percussion tracks. So in that case, it's delay. These are the effect sends for effect B for the synth tracks. I believe that's reverb still. And then down here we have some punching effects. And now we can jam. Arpeggio. Wrong track. <laughs> the wrong fader.
<laughs> so there we go. A very, very, very rough overview of just some of the things you can do. I can't wait to update some of the uh, controls on here and figure things out a little better. I plan on having these go uh, forward one pattern, back one pattern. Um, I don't know what to do with these. Maybe more drums. I don't know. I've also got these open. Uh, yeah, this is just like the coolest thing ever. The fact you can just... You know, on the fly. Just brings a whole new element to an already incredible little device. Uh, I don't know why these aren't being like almost uh, almost advertised together. I know they're different manufacturers, but this thing makes the OPZ 10 times better, which I didn't even think was possible. So if you guys like this video, you're excited for uh, the jams we're gonna have, be sure to leave a like on the video. We're almost to 500 subscribers, 495 right now, so thank you guys so much for that. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time, everybody. Bye.